Hi, this is Maggie. In this video, we're going to talk about sprites that are controlled by the player. This is a program called Boundary Check Sprite.py. Each of these balls is an instance of this wrapping ball class. The sprites appear to move because each time through the game loop, they are erased, their location is changed, and they are redrawn. When we're working with sprites, we put our sprites in a group and call the clear, update, and draw methods of the group at the end of our game loop. Within the sprite, we write the update method, which makes changes to the sprite's appearance, location, or both, in accordance with how the sprite now appears at this point during game execution. In the wrapping ball update method, the sprite adjusts its x coordinate by adding the value in its dx field to a location property of its rectangle, in this case the center x property. It then does some boundary checking. You can add as many fields and methods to the sprite as you need to maintain its state so that it updates as it should. For example, if you want the sprite to cycle through several different images over time, as with the fireworks in this snowyfireworks.py program, then you will want the sprite to have a field holding all of the images. As well as an index into the list of images so that you know which image is the current image. If the list is ordered, then the next image in the list is the next image the sprite will use to draw. For this program, the fireworks sprite also has a counter that it uses to determine when to update the image. So to summarize, you will update the sprite's appearance and or location in the update method. But unless it is a very simple sprite, you will need to keep track of information in the fields of the sprite that define the sprite's state. Time and player activity can change the sprite state. Collisions and factors in the game other than the player's action can also change the sprite's state. We will look at this program called class-.py as an example of how the player can control a sprite's motion and what data and methods we might want to add to the sprite to achieve that. Here is the program running. I'm pressing the arrow keys to move the little student around the college green. Eventually, I would like to add paths and buildings and give the player the goal of getting the student to class on time. Let's talk about how this motion is achieved. First, the basics. I've defined a sprite class called student, and I've instantiated a student sprite, and put that sprite in a group called student group. At the bottom of the game loop, I send the student group the clear update and draw messages. I want the sprite to be responsive to key presses. In the event loop, I'm responding to key down and key up messages. I respond to a key down message by checking if the key is one of the arrow keys. If it is, I send the student sprite the move message. Now, there isn't a built-in move message. This is something that I've added to the student sprite so that it will be responsive to key presses. The move method will change the internal state of the student sprite so that the next time it receives the update message, it will change itself according to the message it received. Notice that the move method takes one parameter. The parameter tells the student sprite what direction it should move in, or whether it should stop. 
In response to the key up event, I'm getting a tuple of Boolean values using pygame.key.getPressed. I'm going to throw a print statement in there to show you what that looks like, and I'll run the game. So I pressed an arrow and then released it, and I get all zeros. That means no keys are pressed. So I'm going to press two keys and release one, and then I had to release the other one to show you. So we'll go to that second to last print and it's hard to find, but here's the one representing the key that was still pressed. I can index into this tuple using the pygame key constants, such as pygame.k up, and if that key is pressed, I will get back true. If it isn't pressed, I will get back false. So on a key up event, if none of the arrow keys are pressed, I will stop the sprite by sending it the move message with a stop constant value that I have defined. I'm checking this because the user might press, say, the up arrow key, and then press the right arrow key before releasing the up arrow key. I don't want the sprite to stop if any arrow keys are pressed. You don't have to do this check, but that means the user will have to be careful to press only one key at a time. Let's go look at what the move and update methods look like in the sprite. And look at what extra fields I've added to keep track of the sprite's state. Okay, so first, I've defined some constants for the different ways the sprite can move, and I defined them as these particular int values for a reason which I'll explain in a moment. I've defined these up before the init method, which means that if I want to refer to them outside of the methods of the sprite, I refer to them as the class name student dot, up, down, etc. You can see down here where I'm calling the move method. I'm passing student dot up, etc. Okay, and then the fields of the sprite object are dx, dy, speed, and face right. The dx and dy fields hold how much I should add to the sprite's location each time update is called. You can see in the init method, I'm setting those to zero because the sprite initially doesn't move at all. The speed is how fast the sprite will move in any direction, and I'm setting that to two because it was a speed that seemed to make sense for the size of the sprite. And if you look at update, it's a lot like the wrapping ball update method, except we're allowing for motion in two directions, and we're not wrapping. So add self.dy to self.rec.top, and add self.dx to self.rec.left. That changes the sprite's location by dx and dy, so it will appear to move when it's redrawn. And then boundary check. And in the boundary checking, I could just stop the sprite at the boundaries by setting its rect's attributes to the boundaries of the screen, but I think it's a little more fun to set it backwards a little bit. That gives us a sort of walking into a wall effect that lets the player know they've reached the limit of how far the sprite can move in that direction. Now the 
interesting method is this move method. This does not move the sprite. It's a response to a command from the user that changes the internal state of the sprite, the values in the fields, so that next time it updates and draws, it will appear to move. So first, I'm setting self.dx and self.dy to zero. That is to stop the sprite from moving in whatever direction it was moving. We're going to move it in a new direction, or stop it entirely, according to whatever key the player has pressed or released. Then I check if the direction that is passed as a parameter is not student.stop. If it is, then we're done. We've stopped motion by setting the dx and dy values to zero. The next time the update method is called, the rectangle will be moved by zero. Now suppose it isn't student.stop, but the user has pressed one of the arrow keys. Then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to rotate the sprite so that it's facing the direction of movement, and I'm going to change either self.dx or self.dy. It's really pretty simple. So if direction is student.left, I set self.dx to negative self.speed. That will subtract from the sprite's rectangle in update, and so it will draw to the left of its old location. And if it's to move right, I set the dx to positive speed. And similarly, for up and down, I set dx to negative and positive speed. Now, for the rotation, if my sprite isn't exactly square, I'll need to get its center, rotate the image, and then set it back to its center so it doesn't wiggle. So I get the center x and center y properties of the rectangle and store them in these variables x and y. I then rotate the field self.face right, which is the sprite's image unrotated. Never rotate an image that is already rotated because it will start to degrade. I always start from the image that was passed into the constructor. And I save that separately from image, which is the rotated image. I then rotate the image, and then I set its center x and center y properties back to the properties I stored. Now, this is where those constants come in. I set them so that I could rotate by multiplying the constant by 90 degrees. So 0 is facing right, which means I don't rotate at all. And 1 is facing up, which means I rotate by 90. And 2 is facing left, which means I rotate by 2 times 90, or 180. And 3 is facing down, which means I rotate by 3 times 90, or 270 degrees. I set those numbers so I wouldn't need an if statement here, so I could just calculate the rotation from the direction constant. Let's go through this start to finish. The program starts with the sprites dx and dy at 0. Now, let's say the user presses the up arrow key. That gets handled down here in the event loop by calling move with the constant student up. dx and dy are set to 0. They were anyway, but they're set to 0 in case the sprite was moving. And then we check if direction is not equal to student stop, and it isn't. We passed in student up. So we begin by calculating a rotation of 90, because student up equals 1, and 1 times 90 is 90. We then get the x and y of the center of the sprite, rotate the image, and set it back so that it's still centered in the same place. We then check if the direction is left or right, and it isn't. But here we check if it's up, and it is. 
so we set self.dy to negative self.speed or negative 2. Okay, that's all done. Now, nothing moved, nothing drew. We just set the internal state of the sprite so that it's now moving up. Now, down in the game loop, clear, update, and draw are called. Clear will erase the sprite at its current location, replacing it with the background image, which is green. Update then invokes the update method. We go up here and we add self.dy to the rectangle's top and we check boundaries. The first time the sprite moves up it won't hit a boundary so we're done. When draw is called the sprite is drawn at its new location using the rotated image. Now if I key up then the move method is called with student.stop and dx and dy are set to zero and so when update is called zero is added to the sprite's location and it redraws exactly where it was. I hope that isn't too hard to follow. I know it can be difficult to write methods that are plugged into a structure that's behind the scenes. I do recommend you try writing this code from your Pygame template. Start out very simply. Don't try to rotate the sprite and don't worry about whether more than one key is released. If you don't rotate the sprite, you could even pass in the key that was pressed to your move method. And check using the pygame constants, pygame.k up, pygame.k left, etc. I define new ones because they facilitated rotating. Once you have that working, use pygame.key.getPressed to make sure no movement keys are pressed before stopping the sprite and rotate the sprite's image in the move code. Once you can write your own player-controlled sprite code, you're ready to move on.